Hey y'all and welcome to welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. I'm Jen. Jeez, oh, Pete, I can't even say our own last name. Uh, today we are trying something a little new and a little fun. It's still a recipe situation, um, but tell them what we're gonna do. Uh, well, first we had to make bread. Well, hey, no, tell them like what, why we even got this idea. Like, where are we doing it from? Well, I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok made me do it. <laughs> And it's a lot of this is going around. Uh, people are starting to like look into what people ate, you know, like during the Great Depression, mm -hmm. like poor man meals, um, also comfort foods of their grandparents, like favorite things that they had. Uh, people are, you know, people are getting into that because basically we're at the back there and almost in it full fledged right now. <laughs> right. So, and it's you know it's kind of a kind of fun too. People are getting into it. They like hearing from their grandparents and stuff. So. I found this one on TikTok, and we're gonna change it a little bit. The one I originally saw was creamed salmon on toast. Ew. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna do creamed tuna on toast. Yeah, so that got us investigating, and we wanna try more Great Depression style <laughs> meals because we honestly cook that way. Like, we mm -hmm. cook that style. It's just some of the specific things put together is what we're getting yes. interested in. And creamed anything on toast seemed to be a very popular meal, so. Yeah. There's cream, creamed beef, creamed mm -hmm. peas, creamed tuna, just cream, which cream yeah. is really gravy. Yeah. Like it, it's gravy that's in there, but they just put different stuff in it to kind of add more protein and stuff like that. So this one seemed to be one of the most popular <laughs> Great Depression meals. And, and so, some of you might know what it is. You might already like it. And for the others, we're going to do it together. We're going to see how it is. Yeah. So let us know down in the comments if you've ever tried creamed, what, which one is this one specifically? Creamed with? tuna on toast. Creamed tuna on toast. That's what we're eating today. So the first thing though. We ain't got bread, right? Go back to the great bread. We ain't got loaves of bread that are but just But we hanging. make our own bread. So yeah, so we we're making our own. We don't have any, so I'm gonna make an artisan bread, not a sandwich loaf. Um, this is gonna be real crispy and hope in hopes that the toast will be a little bit crunchier for the <laughs> so cream. So it's not just the big old pile of bush. <laughs> yes. And soft bread. All right, so first up, artisan bread. Okay, so we've got our mixer. Um, you could do this by hand if you wanted to. I use my mixer for all the bread. It just feels easier and faster. Um, and we're gonna put three cups of flour in. My flour that I have is bread flour, but it can be all-purpose. But usually for artisan bread, bread flour just goes a little bit better because it makes it crispier and just not like a sandwich loaf. All right, so we've got our flour. Next, we're gonna do one tablespoon of sugar. We're gonna do two teaspoons of yeast. This is just regular yeast. You can use rapid or instant. I found that it doesn't matter either way because um, we're going to let it rise. We're going to do one and a half teaspoons of salt. We're going to do one tablespoon of olive oil. Uh, <laughs> Don't have enough in there. <laughs> Dang, do we even have any? Um, Somewhere. <laughs> so we did find more olive oil. Now, this is like a, that's like a staple of Great Depression, right? It's like you looked at your ingredients like, crap, I don't have that and I'm not going to be able to get it. What can we replace? You can go and just do water. Yeah. I mean, it, We're going to put water in anyway. You just you don't need the oil. Right. You don't have to have it. Um, but you can also use lard, probably butter. Mm -hmm. And any kind of oil. Yeah. Um, if you any had, kind of fat. Yeah, if you had like some bacon grease or something that you had saved from your bacon, because in the Great Depression you save everything, yes. you could just use some of that too. Yeah. Um, so that's the creative mindset of the Great Depression mix. I'm waiting on my water to warm up. <laughs> Takes a while. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 warm up there. <laughs> I'm going to do one and a half cups of very warm water. They can't hear you. Not We've been through this with the sink. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half cups of very warm water. But not hot. Not hot, just, just very, very warm. warm. All right, so we're going to mix this all together. Um, a whisk would probably be better, but I don't want to dirty up that many dishes. I never do. I just use this because it's always in there and I'm always making bread and it's what I'm going to use later. So I don't feel like getting the whisk out. There you go. I mean, so, is the bread hook. Yes. I mean, you're mixing it, but your dough is still going to be very wet and sticky. Um, so it's not going to look like regular bread dough. Just keep that in mind. You can add more flour if you want to. Um, it's still going to be very sticky but it just 
like how much flour you need really depends on everything like your weather <laughs> your house the moisture like it just it's the, different every time the moon yeah <laughs> but that is the consistency that you're looking yes. for and you can always play around with it um make it what you want but that's consistency very sticky but it is dough so we're going to take this off now you can put it in a different bowl or take this out or whatever i'm just going to take our towel i'm going to drape it over top and then we're going to let this rise until it's doubled in size again that just depends on a whole lot of different things but typically like an hour to two hours could take up to three we'll see how it goes today yeah and it, i mean a, a lot of it too is heat as well so if you have it close Something around. If you have it close to a heat source too, that also helps kind of rise a little bit quicker. So if you have your wood burner stove going to it over close to that kind of thing, like I said, all kinds of different factors. Yep. You're just shooting for double in size. All right, it's been a couple hours and you can see how much it has rose. And then so Jen is over here. She's got the oven preheating at 450. And I was actually, had to go around looking for the top to our Dutch oven, but we're gonna do that and we're gonna stick it in the oven so it'll preheat with it. And there's a pan in there. Who else? Who else stacks their <laughs> sheet pans in the, in the oven and forgets about them and turns the oven off? All right, now that we got the sheet pan out, we are going to put Daddy. Dutch oven. Daddy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they're over here opening up Chris's car. Isn't somebody said why in Raylan's car? Look at there, she got dollars. Yeah. Hey, let's see who it's from. I have no idea. <laughs> you can read. Linda, say thanks, Linda. Thanks, Linda. That was nice. Happy holidays. Oh, we got a letter. Right there, white man. I got a dollar in mine. You're gonna get the only get you down to have faith in here, son. You're gonna get that open. It's a fun way to open it. All right, what's it say? Read the front. What's it say? Not of your nice. There you go. Get you a dollar too, huh? Yeah. Here's the front. Wyatt, you are going to have a great Christmas. You are such a help to your daddy. And the golf. Can you say thank you? Thank you, Linda. What does she get? Very cute. Nice. Mm -hmm. You scored big, didn't you? Yay! And then look at that, these awesome tea towels. Sunflowers in a mason jar. So cool. This one. Beautiful. Looks like a bundle of lavender. Yeah. Thank so you very nice. much. This Thank is you. gorgeous. All right. What are you doing while that preheats? Okay. I'm going to get this out and knead it a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, but just kind of like fold it into itself and all the good things. And if you're hearing a loud noise in the background, we're not vacuuming. Your editor is uh, what dry vacuum the basement <laughs> because we've had a lot of rain. Yeah. I think this is one of my favorite breads you make. Like your sandwich bread is perfect for everyday use, but this one is just like a real nice treat. And I'll put the ingredients list below. It's very simple. Yes. Is there any unique technique to this or just fold it? Fold it and push it? Fold it, push it, and it'll turn out bread. No matter what you right. do, <laughs> dough, it's gonna cook, <laughs> heavy bread. It's gonna cook, it's gonna rise, yeah. you're yeah. gonna eat it, yeah. it's gonna be good. A lot of people do a whole lot more, um, and I guess, you know, if you're into, like, art, in my experience, it's gonna turn into bread in way, so we That's just do the bread and walk away. <laughs> There's not enough time in our day, and we're glad that there is for some I other people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to cut a quick flower? Yes. You do want to cut a quick flower? Uh, well, not a flower. I'm just going to slice it. I'm just slice and dice it? Okay. All right. So I'm just doing some slices? Yeah. Just, I can do whatever I want? Yeah. Whoa. Let's see. Go crazy. Can't you smell that smell? It doesn't look like it right now, but it's going to be a happy little tree. <laughs> Is it or do you want me to do more? I'm going to the sides. <laughs> it'll cook. <laughs> it'll be bread either way. It's gonna be bread either way. <laughs> All right, lid on. Put it back in the oven. Thirty minutes. Okay, we're going in the oven. Thirty minutes at four fifty. So we apparently don't have peas. This is turning more into a great, like just a real life Great Depression meal than anything. Because we, we didn't think we had tuna, but we do have tuna. Yeah. Ran out of oil, but we found it. But we definitely don't have peas. Nope. So what are we gonna do? We got lima beans. <laughs> So we're gonna have creamed tuna and llama beans. Don't watch this while you're eating your supper. I, it's gonna ruin it. People love it. It's it's well, definitely my reaction is gonna make you not like it. So well, y'all know her and Wyatt. They're all about they eat with their eyes mm -hmm. and their touch and all those things before it even hits their mouth. Yep. If they don't look right, if they don't feel mm -hmm. right, 
gonna be wet. They usually don't like, and she definitely doesn't like wet. It's and this wet. whole thing is gonna be <laughs> sopping wet. So we have a little minute. Those only you just get wrapped up oil, right? So we got a minute. We gotta wait for the bread to cook up because that takes a while. It's thirty minutes with the lid on, fifteen with it off. So when we take the lid off, that's when we get started doing the other stuff. But it's gonna be good. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. I'm excited about it. Are you? Yeah, because I like extremely just great, great grandma's food. Mm. I think it's going to be good. I just hope that it, it is good so that we don't go to bed hungry. Well, we're not going to go to bed hungry. We're going to eat it. We're grown adults. We're going to clean our plate. I don't know. We'll see. What are you I'm doing? nervous. <laughs> okay. I think it's the tuna that's throwing us. Yes. Because we're making gravy. It's called cream. I already said that. It's gravy. So mm. gravy and bread is going to be good. It's like gravy and biscuits. It's the tuna. That's interesting, but I'm not gonna knock it till I try it. That's right. That's right. All right, 30 minute timer. A little warm. Hold on my face. All right. Oh, she's starting to look yummy. My happy little treat doesn't look like a happy little treat. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so what do we do now? Uh, now we're gonna let it cook for another 15 minutes. Okay, so we just took the top off. Two tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, and a half cup of milk and salt and pepper. Okay, here we go. We're gonna make the actual fun part of this Great Depression stuff, and we are going to make the cream first. Yes. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put you down here so you can watch. So the first thing you need to do is just melt your butter. So, y'all, like I, I keep saying, if you've ever made gravy, that's what we're doing here. So once that melts, that's when we'll add the flour to thicken it, and then we will add the milk to try to get it thick. I smell it. I already smell the tuna. I'm just thinking how that's gonna match in with gravy. Great. I've changed my attitude. I'm excited. Yeah, you've changed your attitude? Well, that's good. I'm just really hungry. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry too. As we continue to approach closer and closer to World War III, it's probably good we're learning this stuff. <laughs> okay, once your butter's melted, and by the way, I'm just on medium heat. You don't want to get too hot here. Um, I'm going to add three tablespoons flour to start. Stir that in. And we need to get this all incorporated and thickened up before we add our milk. Because this is basically what makes your gravy. If you want. So you're just trying to get to a paste-like texture. Really, this could be considered a five minute meal. After the bread, like once you've made the bread, because it's so quick. Yeah, I mean, if you had bread, it'd be really easy. Right. <clears throat> you could put this together real fast. So see, I'm, see, there's a lot of Bob Ross comparisons here. So yeah, I'm just kind of dragging that paintbrush down <laughs> and making sure it's all incorporated. All right, I would say we're at a pace, don't you? Slowly, just give me a, about half or so. And this is with our freeze-dried milk, so that's interesting. Go ahead and drop it in there. Drop it on in there. I don't know about you, but I feel like we're gonna need more milk. And we'll add our seasonings here in a minute. We are using, because we had it in our pantry, we're using a Glory. Mm -hmm. And y'all know how Glory, if you've ever had them, they season that bad boy up. So we don't really want to add too much to it. One thing with gravy is you want to make sure you consistently stir. You're dealing with milk. You want to don't want it to burn or anything. I hope this is like the best thing ever. I do too. So I want to try the chip beef one. Yeah, you use chip beef. You know what I That's think? That's really we, popular. I think another thing would be good, like the kielbasa. Yeah. Like throwing kielbasa in there. Like or, we're getting, um, we're too thick. I need more milk. Canned fish. Any kind of canned fish. <laughs> it's getting grosser and grosser by the minute. All right, I mean, that's starting to look real, like real nice. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. We're gonna get a little thicker, get a little thicker, girl. Shoot doggy. Mm, there we go, we're starting to get there. When it starts like pushing a little thicker, I mean, we're still a little thin. I like I like plenty of pepper in my gravy. Yeah, throw your tuna in all of it. So this, we drained it. Oh, God. <laughs> I love lava beans, so I'm still okay up to this point. Well, I don't hate lava beans. I've never had them with tuna, though. Throw your tuna in. Man. Man, you had to be like really scavenging the the pantry. I think, you know, probably what it was was like, we know we all like gravy. We can do that, right? Like we, we have gravy, but just right. gravy isn't going to fill us up. What of this like disgusting stuff do we have in the pantry that we can throw in here and mask it? Well, it's a lot of food groups too. Yeah. Berry, Getting a lot of protein. protein your vegetable. veggies. So basically, I'm just going to kind of let this sit and heat up everything and let it thicken. And, and then when it's to the, I guess, the level of thickness that we want, we're just going to pour it on our bread. So you're either sitting out there and you're like, oh man, that looks good. It's one of my favorite meals. I remember that. Or you're thinking, what in the absolute <laughs> world is happening right now? I'm a little bit of both. This is really Smell good. <laughs> Smell it. 
Yeah. A lot of that has to do with the glory vegetables too. We have to taste it no, for to see if it needs anything. To see if it needs anything. Like I'm just doing the gravy. We're just gonna try the gravy. I think I need some salt. No, I don't know. I think it's salty enough. You think so? Okay. I'm saying I don't want to. I don't want to have any. We don't want to give the the reveal until it's on the bread. Well, I'm actually thinking we can put like hot sauce over top once it's on the bread because that would be good. It definitely needs a kick. Another reason, like this is fun. We're enjoying doing this, but this is a really good thing to learn. Mm -hmm. Making bread, making gravy yes. are two essential things that you need to know how to make because those things are both very hearty, yep. and then you can have both of those and you can add stuff to them yep. um, to give you more of the stuff that you need. And that's your two essentials. If you don't know how to yep. make bread and gravy, you need to learn how to. Next to that, I would say your third most important skill to learn is how to render your old lard. Yes, agreed, because in situations where you can't get a hold of oil, yep. that's like how you- Any kind of fat. You exactly. Need, you need fat in your diet. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what these, New age doctors say these days you need healthy fats in I your diet. Completely agree. But that so. does not include oil. I'm talking about animal fats. <laughs> yep. And you know, if you're not raising your own pigs at this time, you can go to your local butcher and ask them yes. for the fat um, that is cut off the pigs. Yep. You can get that kind of lined up for you because when they're getting this stuff, I mean, most time I'm sure it's probably getting thrown away. Oh yeah. If I had to guess. Uh, so. There's a way to get it, learn how to do it. <clears throat> and then you get cracklings. Yep. Everybody loves cracklings. All right, I think we're yeah. to where we want to be. So I think the bread's probably ready. Yeah. Look at that. I love artisan And y'all saw how easy that was. So simple. It don't look like a tree though. Hut, 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 hut. Oh. Hey, take it, dog. Throwing it at me. Throwing it. Okay, we got dinner, but we all got to taste test this. If you are making this bread, ideally let it cool before you start cutting into it, but. We're just we're not doing that today. It's a Great Depression uh, <clears throat> meal. Really? Yeah. What's it called? It's uh, creamed <laughs> tuna. Put it over toast. Yes. We make gravy and then tuna and lima beans in it. What you need a bowl? Yeah. yeah, you put it over bread. Don't give me we'll that much. Don't give you that much. <laughs> give you that much. <laughs> I want a light coating. You could just tear it, but I don't know if you're going to be able to tear it with this. Right. <laughs> it smells like tuna. Yep. Oh man, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm good. Like it's really, it reminded me of something. That good. It reminds me of nothing. It reminds me of nothing. <laughs> it's good though. I don't taste the tuna a whole lot. No, I think your bread is a little too rich. You get complaints about your bread? Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying like for the authentic experience, you yeah. know, like molded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> molded bread that you Sara Lee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm freaking good. This is an okay level of wetness for me. I'm happy with it. Yeah, I think it's freaking great. You're really good. You can make this as much as you want. But what kind of tuna did you get? Chicken of the sea or? No, it's a step up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a White House version. <laughs> <laughs> All right, add it to the normal rotation. Yeah. What a quick meal too. That took us five minutes. Mm -hmm. Besides making the bread. When the economy collapses, we make this better than eating people. Yeah. Success. We wanted to do a Great Depression meal, and we're probably gonna do more of these. We're probably gonna try out some of the different stuff. There's weird foods out there that they ate in the Great Depression, but it's weird in our heads. Um, and I want us to get creative, and that's what we've been kind of preaching. So I want us to figure out some of the stuff that these people ate out of their pantry. How did they do it? And I want us to start incorporating that because we might be surprised about the things we like. Yeah, and we already eat like that anyway. Like that's yeah. just our lifestyle, the way that we, you know, raise our food and do our lard and cook from scratch. We already do all that, we preserve. Um, but it's still stuff that you might not have necessarily thought to put together and it's funny because we always ask you that too Or like tell us, you know, some of the stuff that you eat out of your pantry and yeah. tell us the stuff you throw together And I just I cannot be mad about that meal at all and it was very filling mm -hmm. So I really can understand why they did that. The only thing I would change is not do the lima beans and do the peas uh, Yeah, I get why they did peas. The glory is just so heavily seasoned that I feel like you couldn't really taste what it was like the true form. <laughs> right. I think even just using our uh, freeze dried mixed veggies, yeah. it, you know, ideally probably would have done that. Yeah. You know, that would have been good in there to just pop in. Um, but it was very good. Um, you know, this is a World War II decaded um, meal that we just tried. And I think it was great. Like I said, it's some staples that you need to learn how to make in your, your uh, kitchen. If you don't know how to make homemade bread, even that, that simple artisan bread, you know, it's pretty, it's very easy. Uh, making gravy, a bunch of this hearty stuff that is the staple in a meal that then you can add flavor to yes. so it doesn't uh, wear you out. Um, but then it was also a five minute meal, right? Like you like this and then now it's a quick and easy wheat meal. 
that you can do. I really want to try it with some uh, kielbasa in it though. Okay. I think it's going to be really fantastic. It could almost turn into like a breakfast. It could. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking if you put sausage, it's going to be biscuits and gravy. <laughs> exactly. Right. It would be really good that way. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed this. If you don't mind, give us a like button or a like hit, whatever, that thumbs up thing down there. If you did like it, that helps us out a lot. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. And definitely let us know if this is something that you've ate before yes. or if you haven't. And now you're just dedicated to trying it because we talked it up so much. <laughs> yeah, and if you do, let us know what yes. you thought of it. We can't wait to hear. Also, because... throw down some more recipes for us. Oh yes, that yeah, that's a big one. Give us some of the Great Depression ones that your great grandma told you about or your grandma told you about. Cause we want to try. Them. Yes. All right, y'all. We love you. Until the next one. Bye. Bye. Cut out paper snowflakes. Let's do it.